All right, moving on in our Welding 101, the beginner's guide to doing stick welding, we're gonna start talking about the parts of a welder, a welding machine. Now, here's the, the thing that most people don't know. A welder, W-E-L-D-E-R, is the actual machine. A weldor, W-E-L-D-O-R, is the person. But we don't really follow that much anymore. We just call him, oh, he's a welder, W-E-L-D-E-R. Doesn't matter. So what we are looking at is the machine. So the machine has settings on it. A machine is meant to do a specific task. So this machine has DC plus, DC minus, and AC. So if you know electricity, or if you don't, that's fine. DC is direct current. That current flows in one direction. And when we say DC positive, that's what we call reverse polarity, okay? That's where the um, electrons that are moving, and that's what we're doing, all electricity is electrons are moving. So with the DC positive, the stinger is used. This is your welding stinger. And you have a ground clamp. This is also called, this is an electrode holder. I commonly call it a stinger. So your ground clamp works with your stinger to produce that electricity flow. So with DC positive, the electricity is flowing through the ground that's connected to your metal table. Then it's flowing up through the electrode and back to the machine. That's called reverse polarity or DC positive. What we commonly use is DC negative. DC negative is where the current will flow through the electrode holder, then through the electrode, through the base metal, through your table, and then through the ground clamp, the wire, back to the machine. That is DC negative or DCEP. Um, or excuse me, DCEN, direct current electrode negative, electric negative. Okay, so we commonly use DC negative, okay, where the electrons are flowing through the stinger, through the table, back to the machine. That's what we use commonly. You could also use AC. AC is alternating current, where those electrons are going forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and they're going so fast, it's it's unreal how fast they go. It's just, it's amazing. That's what you have in your house. You have um, alternating current, or AC. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? So it produces a little bit different weld. You need different electrodes. They have different numbers on them. We'll talk about that later. But for the most part, it's nice to use, for beginners, the DC negative. So, the parts of our welder, like we said, you have an electrode holder or a stinger that I commonly call it. You'll need an electrode. It functions just like a clamp. You press on the one side and it opens the jaws and you'll stick your the metal end, the exposed metal end of your electrode into the clamp end, the stinger end, you have a ground clamp that will need to be clamped onto the metal table you are using or the metal that you're using. If you have a big flat piece of metal, you can clamp it onto there. But we have to create that path for the electrons to flow in order to weld. So then you have your machine, and then there's some additional tools that you have in your booth or that you will need at your house. One of those is a brush, a steel brush with steel 
bristles. That is so you can um, clean off your weld after. And before you clean it off though, you'll need a chipping hammer. A chipping hammer is meant to chip the slag off of your weld. So when we produce a weld, when we are welding, the electrons are creating that arc and it is burning this filler rod inside this coating that we call flux. The flux burns off and it creates its own little atmosphere. Oxygen and the atmosphere is not good for a weld. It's not good at all. So we have this flux that goes on the, the filler metal and it creates its own little atmosphere down here, making sure that oxygen is not gonna get in the well and create bad things for it. So we um, <clears throat> have electrode, we have cover, covered in filler metal, we have when that filler, that atmosphere cools, it creates a coating over that weld that we call slag. The slag will need to be chipped off. That's what we have a chipping hammer for. You'll chip that metal off. So then we have, um, those are basically the only tools that we have in our booth. We also have here a water bucket full of water. This is for students who when they weld, they'll have a pair of pliers that are currently not in here, but they should be in every booth. But there'll be a pair of pliers. The student will use that pair of pliers to pick up their hot metal if they just welded, put it in the water and set it back so they can continue to weld and not have to wait for that thing to air cool. Now, water is bad for structural weld. It makes that weld very brittle, very, very hard, but very brittle. So if you were doing a structural weld, or if you were doing a weld for a test, you would not want to put it in water. You want it to air cool. But we're just learning to weld, so we're gonna cool that off in water so we can get back and do another weld, okay? So this is your booth. This is your setup. Those are the parts of a welder. Um, one thing we didn't discuss on the actual machine is the settings. It'll have numbers. That's the amperage of your machine. The higher the number, the hotter the weld. The lower the number, the colder the weld. If the weld is, or if the number is too low, it'll be really hard to strike an arc because there's not enough amperage, not enough current going. If it's too high, it'll strike an arc really easy, but then it'll almost blow through your, your metal that you're trying to weld on. So there's a, a, a happy medium in there somewhere. There's a happy point. We have to find that if we don't know what we're doing, but more times than not, our books that we use will give you a range of where to start. And I will tell my students, set it to this setting, try it there, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you on the next one.